Hi, welcome back. Hi, welcome back. Good Hi. evening, Scout. Hi. And boy, is it a magical night. Why? That's what I say every night. Because you're going to build Code in Battle, one of my favorite robots. I personally, I don't know about you, but I'm a huge fan of the Perry Horner series. Uh, I'd have to say my favorite character is that bungalow gremlin, Dorby. <laughs> Tonight at your workbench, you'll be modding the Vex IQ Ike build into Dorby. You'll crank out the last part of Dorby's CAD model and you'll bang out some intense code in pursuit of beating the Robo Wizard battle. Depending on the color that Dorby senses, it'll deliver the character in front of it either to Honeydukes, if it's good, or the Chamber of Secrets, if it's not so good. Moving I on. I don't know. I think that, I think honestly, the code is probably the hardest part. Definitely code heavy. Um, thank you. Good night. All right, the first ingredient in Dorby's recipe is a fresh Vex IQ kit. Step one, build yourself an Ike. You can use the PDF linked in the description or you can hop on the train here.
Got it, wow, awesome. Time for some mods. All right, starting off with mounting that touch LED, you're gonna grab two two by two corner connectors, four one by one connector pins, your touch LED sensor, and a good old cable. All right, you're gonna mount that buddy on the back of Dorby's back. Plug one end of the cable into the touch LED and the other into the port of your choice. Next up, we got a new sensor coming down the tubes, the gyroscopic sensor. Or gyro, we call it the gyro. Okay, this pal measures rotation. So when you turn, instead of giving your motors a certain amount of power for a certain number of milliseconds, which can be inaccurate and affected by battery level, the gyro will tell you how many degrees you've actually turned relative to a starting point. It's very helpful for the Robo Wizard battle. All right, you're gonna grab your gyro, two one by one connector pins and a cable. Plug one into your cable into the gyro and you're gonna mount the gyro with a cable facing away from you. On this sensor, the orientation that you mount it in is important. Plug it into the port of your choice. All right, let's mount the color sensor. The name says it all. This sensor senses color. So grab your color sensor, a four by four plate, a two by two corner connector, six one by one connector pins, and a cable. All right, you're gonna mount your plate onto the front of Dorby. Connect that corner connector, two holes from the top, plug in the sensor, and mount it to the corner connector. Plug her in. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, time to fully transform this robot into Dorby the Bungalow Gremlin. Links in the description to the OG Dorby ear designer and to the files for this mod if you wanna print something by yourself. You're gonna need four one by one connector pins, a left ear, and a right ear. Nice and easy, you're gonna move Dorby's eyes down, pop the connector pins into the ears, and pop those ears into place. Booyah! All right, click on the to access the family-friendly CAD tutorial for Dorby. Party hard, then come back here when you're done. Hold on one second, I need to check the time. It's coding time. Hi, I'm Greta, and welcome to coding. First things first, let's make sure we're on the right settings in Robot C. Make sure the platform type is set to Vex IQ, and let's go ahead and make sure Vex IQ controller mode is set to autonomous, since there's no need for a controller for the Robo Wizard battle. Let's make a little home for Dorby's code to live in by creating and saving a new file. All right, time to set up that good old hardware. I'm gonna enter my motors as left motor in port one, right motor in port 12, the motor that's controlling the body is in port 11, and the arms are in port 
five or wherever you plug the motors in. Don't forget to configure all of these as VEX IQ motors. And instead of reversing the left motor like we did for Norbert, we're actually gonna reverse the right motor. Why, you might ask? It's because Dorby's drivetrain has little idler gears that make the wheels spin the same direction as the motor, unlike Norbert. In terms of sensors, let's head over to devices and set up our touch LED in port four, our gyro in port 10, and the old color sensor in port six. And now under color sensor, you can pick how you'd like to detect colors, and we're gonna choose to detect colors based on their hue, so choose color sensor hue. Hit apply and okay and boom. It's now in our robot C code. Okay, so the robo wizard battle is completely autonomous. No driving indeed. Since there's so much going on with this battle, so many little steps to deliver a character either to Honey Dukes or the Chamber of Secrets, it's gonna be a wee bit of a challenge to keep our code clean and readable. And that is why we're gonna employ our old friend functions to break this code down into digestible little meat chunks. Let us begin. Okay, so the very first thing that needs to happen when we run our code is we need to reset the gyro sensor so that it stores our current position as zero degrees. There are a couple commands for this, so let's make a function since we'll be resetting the gyro a bunch of times in the code. So first we have to create a forward declaration up top for this function. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call mine gyro reset parentheses semicolon. Then down here, let's define the function void gyro reset parentheses opening curly brace closing curly brace. Now first to reset the gyro, we have to call the reset gyro command and pass to it the name of our gyro sensor, which is gyro sensor. Secondly, we need to give it some time to reset properly. I'm giving it two seconds. Boom. Function done. Resetting the gyro is the very first thing that needs to happen when we run the code. So let's call our gyro reset function first thing inside the main function. Okay, so as soon as the gyro resets, we'll embark on a journey where we'll be on the lookout for either green or red color blocks. So let's set up a forever loop because we want to check over and over and over again for those sweet, sweet color blocks. And inside this forever loop, we have three possible scenarios. First, if the color sensor sees green, if it sees red, or if it doesn't see either of those. So that's if, else if, and else. To check if Dorby sees green, we have to check if the hue that the color sensor is currently reading is within the range that the VEX IQ sensor considers green. And the green range is any color with a hue greater than 50 and up to and including 130. So the way we check to see if we've hit green is we check if the color value of our color sensor is greater than 50 and we do this with double ampersand. The color value of the color sensor is less than or equal to 130. We're gonna encapsulate each of these comparisons in their own set of parentheses. So with if statements, you can require that more than one condition needs to be met for it to be considered true using the and operator. In this case, we're saying that the color value we're getting has to be greater than 50 and less than or equal to 130 for this whole if statement to be considered true. Not one or the other, it's both of them. And you can do as many ands as you want in an if statement if there are multiple conditions that need to be met. Checking for red is a little bit different. A color value is considered red if it's either under 50 or, which is a double vertical bar, it's greater than 219. So in this case, we're saying that it can be either under 50 or over 219 for this if statement to be considered true. Okay, and then if neither of these colors are seen, it'll just go down to the else here and make my drivetrain go forward. And actually to save time later on, I'm gonna set up a variable of type integer, which is a whole number, to store a standard power that we'll use throughout the program. And that way, if I don't like the power, I can just change it up here. It, it just says adds comments, so do that. At this point, I would save the file and compile the code to see if you get any errors. Now let's keep moving. So there are two main routines that need to run, one when Dorby sees green and another when Dorby sees red. I'm gonna set up a function to store each of these routines so that all the commands that go into each routine are kind of down and out of the way and not making our main function all messy. All right, let's get them set up. For declaration up top, letting robots know that these are two functions we wanna use. I'm calling them green routine and red routine. Boom, and we'll define them down below outside the main function. Void green routine parentheses opening and closing curly and same for red routine. We'll build these out in a little bit, but for now let's call them when we want them to activate. So if we see green, we wanna run green routine, so we're gonna call our green routine function. And if we see red, we're gonna call the red routine function. Boom! One thing I wanna do is as soon as Dorby sees green, turn that touch LED on to green to indicate that the correct color is being seen. Then we call the green routine function and the robot will run whatever we put in the green routine function. And then when it's done with that and pops back up here to execute the next command, we're gonna tell it to turn off that touch LED because it's done with the green routine. That's what I call a yay moment. I'll do the same if red is seen, except make the color red, yuck, yuck, yuck. So now let's give ourselves some sweet, sweet building blocks to actually build out our green and red routine functions. And the goal is to keep the code as simple as possible and reduce as much bulk as we can. So let's set up 
up some functions to take care of some of the more repetitive tasks that we'll need to do a ton of times, like stopping, going forward, going backward, and turning. So I'm gonna create some forward declarations for all of those. One to stop the robot, one for backing up, one for turning left, and one for turning right. And remember that you can name yours whatever you want. Now let's set up some definitions for all of those like we do for every function down below. Now let's fill them out one by one. First things first, stopping. It's pretty easy. We just have to send zero power to both drivetrain motors, left and right. Now moving on to the function for going forward. We know we want to give power to both drivetrain motors using our sweet little variable for motor power level. Here's what makes this function interesting. So at this point, we don't know how long we want the drivetrain to go forward for, and we'll definitely have to go different distances forward at different points in the routine. So how do we make it so we can use this one function to go forward for different distances? Well, what we're going to do with our wait one msec command, since we know that the amount of time will be different on different occasions, is we're going to put a variable there. I'm calling it x, but you can call it whatever you want. Then after x milliseconds has passed, we'll stop the motors by calling the stop function we just set up. Now to make this variable work inside the parentheses in the forward declaration up here and in the function header down here, we got to declare this variable x. Basically telling Robossi, hey, this right here is a special variable for this function. And of course, we made the variable of type in for number of milliseconds. Let me show you how this works. Let's say that up here in our green routine, I want to go forward 500 milliseconds or half a second. I can simply call my go forward function like normal, except because this function has a special variable called x, robot C needs me to give it a value for the variable x when I call this function. Remembering how x represents the number of milliseconds I want to go forward for, I simply pass 500 milliseconds to the function. Robot C then jumps down to my go forward function, takes the 500 I pass to it, and stores it in x. Then it runs through the function, gives power to the motors, and then it waits for the number of milliseconds that it stored in x, which is 500. Then it stops the motors and pops back up to where it left off. Let's say I do some other things like turn, scream internally, whatever. And after all that stuff, I want to go forward again, but this time for a thousand milliseconds or one second. Now I can simply call my go forward function, pass to it a new value for x, 1000, and robot C will run through this function with x now representing 1000. And if it doesn't make sense now, don't worry, you'll get used to the notion. FYI, this special function variable is called a parameter in the world of coding. And the values we pass to be stored in that parameter are called arguments. Good news is that our function for going backwards is almost exactly the same as the one for going forwards. Except I'm gonna call the parameter for this function something different, like y. So I'm gonna add that parameter, change the x to y, and of course the motor powers will be negative. Quick, save it! Okay, now on to turning. For our left turn function, we know that all the left turns that we'll need to make will be 90 degree turns, so that keeps it nice and simple. All we need to do is first give negative power to our left motor, positive power to our right motor, and I like to make the turning power pretty low to get the motor most accurate turns. Okay, so normally we just give Dorby a number of milliseconds to turn for, and then tweak that number of milliseconds until we achieve that crisp 90. With the gyro sensor, we can actually turn until it measures that we've turned 90 degrees almost exactly. We'll use a command called wait until, so basically wait until the number of degrees we're measuring, which we can check using the get gyro degrees command for our gyro sensor, is greater than 90. So you can picture the robot turning left and counting the number of degrees as it's turning. And the very second that it counts past 90, we'll stop the robot, thus making Dorby achieve that crisp 90 degree turn. The last step is to reset our gyro by calling our function so that wherever Dorby ends up after that turn becomes the new zero to count from. In terms of building out our right turn function, it's actually very similar. In fact, let's do the old copy and paste. Let's invert the motor power so that now the right one's going backwards and the left motor forwards. And the only other thing that needs to be different here is our goal degrees for the right turn. The goal objectively is still 90 degrees, but when turning right, the gyro sensor counts down to negative 90 instead of up to positive 90. That's also going to affect our comparison since we're counting down, we want to turn until our degree count is less than negative 90 instead of greater than positive 90. You survived! Now onto putting these functions to use in our green and red routines. Okay, so let's start by building out our green routine function. So what do we want it to do when Dorby even sees green? First we want it to stop going forward, so we'll call our stop function. Then we want the bot to pop forward a little bit to prepare for grabbing our little pal. So I would say it's the perfect time for our go forward function. And in terms of how many milliseconds to pass to it, you'll have to find the number that works for you. I found that around 310 milliseconds pop me forward the right amount. Okay, so now comes the magical time where we pick up our spicy little friend in preparation to drop them off for an adventure at Honeydukes. There are a few steps that are part of the picking up process. So I'm 
make a little function for it. Up at the top, I'm gonna declare it as pick up, and then we can define it down below. Okay, so first we need to lean forward a little bit to give the body some significant power forward. This is the time that I found worked for me, and then make it stop. Then we got to grab that noodle by bringing the arms all the way forward, then stop. Then we got to set the body back up to prepare for turning, so bring it back the same amount of time that you brought it forward. Now we can call this function up in our green routine. So now that we've got our little buddy in our grasp, we got to back it up. I'm going to say for about 630 milliseconds so that we're lined up with honeydukes. Now for the moment of truth, time for that sweet, sweet left turn. I'm going to call that function to execute our crisp 90 left. Okay, so now we're facing our destination. I'm going to pop it forward for a little bit. I'm passing 600 milliseconds to the function so that we're squarely on the mat. Now it's time for drop off. Just like pick up, I'm going to make a function for the drop off. This is the last function, I swear. For declaration and then let's define it. This is the exact same as the pick up function, so I'm a copy and paste, with the only difference being that the arms are opening and not closing. Now let's call this sucker from our green routine. So it's time to set ourselves up for continuing on the journey. Now that the noodle has been safely delivered, we need to back up to the same spot we were before. So let's go backward the same amount we went forward up here, and then we need to turn back to our starting orientation. Looks like a 90 degree right turn is in order, so we'll call the handy little function for that. And now we're facing the same way. And finally, the last step of our green routine is to go forward a bunch. I'm gonna put 1200 milliseconds so that when we go back to the main function and start checking for colors again, we don't accidentally see the same green block that we just saw. We wanna get ourselves firmly off of that green. Now it's time for the exciting part. Save it, compile it, download it, and test it. On your brain, click autocode, then the name of your program. And if something doesn't work, start tweaking those nums. You can edit the number of degrees you turn, the amount you go forwards or backwards, any of it. And once you're happy with how the green routine's going, we'll move on to the red. So let's piece together our red routine. Start by copying and pasting the contents of your sweet, sweet green routine into here. Everything should be the same, except one important thing. Since the Chamber of Secrets is on the right, that first turn needs to be a right turn, which also means that after our drop off, we need a left turn to take us back to the starting orientation. I do believe it's battle time. Compile and download your code. So just a quick overview, we check over and over again if either green or red is sensed. If either one is sensed, we turn on the touch LED, go to the corresponding routine, either green or red, and execute the function inside of it top to bottom. Once Robot C has reached the closing brace of the function, it pops back up to wherever it left off in the if statement right after the routine. So it turns off the touch LED and then goes back to checking for colors. Ah, that's the life. And that's it. It's time to rescue or punish some wizards. Mm, I didn't. Anyway, best of luck in the Robo Wizard battle. See you on the other side. Yeah.